So here I have yet another Sansui AU717. I bought four of these to refurbish and resell. I sold about two or three of them. I know I still have one more. Um, and this particular one is just about completely through the refurb process, but I noticed a problem when I was testing it out. And the problem is that on the left channel, it exhibits asymmetrical clipping. Now, what that means is when we drive an output stage to its limits, it should clip evenly on the top and bottom. And this one doesn't. This one's only clipping on the bottom. So there's some kind of imbalance in the amplifier that we're going to have to find. Now, the offset bias all set without trouble. So this is going to be interesting. I'm not really sure where to start with this, but I will show you how I determine that's in the output stage. Okay, so I've got the signal generator hooked up and I had to hook, have the amplifier hooked up to the dummy loads, distortion analyzer, and scope. My usual uh, setup, so the distortion analyzer auto ranges, so you'll see it jump up and down, look like it's clipping when it's really not. So what we want to do, and you can see it here, we have good signal here, but we have clipping on the bottom, and we're not at max power. Uh, this amplifier should put out 85 watts a channel, and the left channel is only putting out 80.8, but we have almost 4% distortion from that nasty clipping on the bottom. So we need to determine where the problem is, because normally what you should see is this. We have a problem here, so we're gonna have to take a look at this and determine what that problem is. So when we were testing this, we were going into the auxiliary inputs. So what we're going to do now is we are going to go into the output stage. So I turn the generator all the way down. We're gonna take the signal generator output and plug it directly into the power amp in. And then we're gonna move the switch over to separate. Now, we should be able to determine if our problem is in the preamp or the power amp. Spoiler alert, it's the power amp. All right, so let's put some signal in and see what this thing looks like. And there it is. I'm directly injecting into the power amp and we can see we have our clipping down on the bottom. All right, so time to break out a schematic and see what we got going on. Okay, so I've got the schematic up here. Now, we're gonna start looking at DC voltages from here and here going back this way. Um, I know some of them are probably on the other part of the schematic. This is one channel, and they generally show the part numbers and values on one channel and then the DC voltages on another. But knowing what we do about amplifiers, we should be able to take a good guess of what we should have going back. So let's see, we should have effectively zero volts here and here. All right, we know this because we set our offset to have zero volts at that point. And we also know that PN junctions will drop about 0.6 volts, so we should have 0.6 volts here. We should have negative 0.6 here. And going back, we should see the same thing. We should have 1.2 here and we should have negative 1.2 down here. Then we should have about 1.8 here and negative 1.8 here. So we can extrapolate what our voltages are supposed to be at least to this point. And this will be a good, good thing for us to check. We can actually start here. Now the other problem is getting to all the test points. All right, so the problem is we need to be able to test voltages on pins all down on here. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna remove this amplifier module, and then we are going to want to flip this chassis over on the other side, put a piece of cardboard 
or plywood down to insulate it and then we're going to hook this back up with it removed from the amplifier and I'll show you what that looks like. Some of the things that your bench should have are pieces of cardboard like this, um, small pieces of wood like these little uh, one by twos, using for spacers, insulators, it's for situations like this. Also, pieces of scrap carpet. I like to throw a piece of this stuff on the bench if I have a particularly ni nice case I don't want to see get scratched up. But anyhow, we got this unit turned upside down and we have everything plugged in like this. Uh, the only plug that didn't reach was one of the grounds, so I just used an alligator clip lead for that. And everything is now available for us to take voltage readings at and see where if we can spot where our problem is. I have the um, amplifier powered up now and I have the meter grounded to the chassis of the amplifier and I have our probe here with my ubiquitous probe extender. I like the fact it's insulated all but the tip so that's what we're going to use. Now I looked at the schematic and interestingly the voltage I filled in, the voltages that I filled in are not shown on the schematic that does have the voltages so it's a good thing we were able to figure those out. But basically what we have is we have our output transistors, our drivers, and our pre-drivers here. And they form what I believe is a triple Darlington. You can see all the collectors are tied together and all the emitters feed into all the bases. So we calculated that we should have zero here, 0.6 volts here, 1.2 volts here, and 1.8 volts here. And it looks like that's about right because if you look at this schematic here you can see we have 1.8 volt right here so we just need to see what the bases of those transistors are if you look at the module here the output transistors are screwed to the heat sinks down underneath and then we have our driver transistors here on this heat sink and then we have our pre-drivers here and here. We want to look at the base of each of those. So that's going to be the base of TR8 and TR11. So we have TR8's bases right here. And we have 1.75 volts. That's pretty close to 1.8 and we look at the base of TR11, we have a negative 1.2, and that's a little too low. So we need to see what our problem is. We're gonna focus on the PNP transistors because we noticed we were asymmetrically clipping at the bottoms. So that tells us that that's gonna be our PNPs. So we wanna start looking basically at that side of the circuit. All right, so we took some voltages to compare to what we have on the schematic here. Now, you've, if you remember, we extrapolated what the voltages should be here, and they looked like they were pretty good. Um, except, when we got back to here, we began to notice that we had an imbalance. And let me rephrase that. We calculated what these should be, and we only started to measure back here. And we saw our imbalance right away. We have our expected 1.8 volts here, but down here, we had negative 1.2. Okay, and that's, that's a problem. You see this negative 1.2 here? We have that at the base. We need to have more like one, negative 1 1.8 here, positive 1.8 here. So after checking some voltages, now it says we should have 56 and negative 56 volts coming in. We don't. Um, this is not regulated, and even though I have the line set with the Variac to 120 volts, it's going to be a few volts off, not a big deal. Just remember that these readings are based on this, and you need to adjust accordingly. So we had not 55 here, but closer to, let's see, I didn't actually measure this point, I think it was 53. Uh, however, comparing to our 54 here, we have 51. That's a little low. Long story short, after measuring these voltages out, 
I came to the conclusion that we want, might want to check this transistor. Now I pulled it and checked it. This is our bias transistor. It sits on the heat sink right here between the two drivers. And it tested fine, but I replaced it anyway. And let me show you what that did for us. Going back and looking at our voltages at the bases of TR8 and TR11, which are pre-drivers, we had originally positive 1.7, and we do, and over here we had negative 1.2. But now we have negative 1.8, which is much closer to what we should have. This was the transistor that was replaced. This is your bias adjustment transistor. And it sits here coupled to the heat sinks, so it will track the changes that the heat sinks get hotter. Now, I want to remind you, this transistor tested perfectly fine, but the real litmus test is whether or not it works in your circuit. That's really all you care about. And we like to find a smoking gun. Sometimes we just have to start testing and replacing parts. I don't like to do that, but when you test voltages and they point to a component and it doesn't test bad, it's quick enough if you have them on hand to just put one in and see if that fixes your problem. And you know what? In this case, it did. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm focused in on the oscilloscope and the distortion analyzer. I want you to take a good look at the sine wave that pops up over here on the left channel. That's where we had our problem before. And if you look now, it looks perfect. We also have no distortion here. And we have our volt, we have our wattage back. You remember this was about 80 watts, and now we have 86 and 87. So this amplifier is now looking really good. By the way, the distortion doesn't meet spec because the distortion analyzer, the distortion oscillator here, the low distortion oscillator in here. Finally spit that out. The low distortion oscillator in here has problems and it's going to be a large large job to fix and i'm not even going to tackle it until i retire that was supposed to be a couple of months ago but um due to the horrendous evaporation rate of my 401k we're going to put that off for a little while in any event this is what the problem was here and just for grins i'm going to feed a low distortion sine wave in let's see what we get Okay, so I have a low distortion source fed in here, and I'll tell you what that is, but currently at 70 to 75 watts, we're looking at 0.03 to 0.1. Let me turn it up a little. Okay, so that is yeah, about 0.1 and 0.03 and 0.04. So my low distortion source is a CD player. I created a sine wave in Audacity, a high purity sine wave, burned it to a CD, and I just play it through a CD player. Um, I have an external volume control. It looks like this guy here. You plug your inputs and outputs in the back. It was about 20, 25 bucks on uh, the world's largest indoor market, Amazon. And uh, this works just fine. You can see that we get really, really low levels of distortion out of this. CD players have inherently low orders of THD, so if you feed in a good sine wave from your CD player, it's going to be better than most of the generators you buy, and certainly a lot cheaper. Anyhow, that was the problem with this. It was that bias transistor, even though it tested good. And I may just check it out a little further to see if I can find anything wrong. But by careful analysis of the circuit, it really couldn't have been anything else. Changing it out did fix it. So I'm going to sign off here. Uh, thank everybody for watching. And as I always say, I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks. Have a good day. Okay, I know I signed off this video already, but I want to show you something that I think you'll find very interesting. Um, I tested the transistor 
that I pulled out, the one that cleared our trouble, with an Atlas DCA Pro, curve tracer, and junction tested it with my Fluke. All three said this is a good transistor. Now, let me show you why I will always have a meter like this on my bench. If we look at the emitter and the collector with the meter on its highest range, R times 10,000, you can see that we have deflection here. So that's 70 times 10,000, that would be 700,000 or 700 K ohms of leakage between the emitter and collector. Here's a new part, and we look between the emitter and the collector. If I can get it hooked on here, we have no deflection whatsoever. This is the only thing that actually showed that that part was bad. And every once in a while, you're gonna find this. This guy has never failed me. The other ones, for the most part, have gotten me by, but when you find something that tests good with everything else, yet is bad, this will show you. So we had a leaky transistor between emitter and collector here, and that's what was causing the problem in our circuit. So I just wanted to show you this before I sign off. And now, as I always say, thank you for watching. I like giving back to the community that has given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks. Signing off for reels this time.